First uh, Corinthians chapter 15. This is our text this morning. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse um, 7 to 11. May I request everybody to please stand as we going to render respect upon the reading of God's word. Let us read responsibly. I will start reading verse 7. Please follow with me, verse 8, until we are done, verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 7. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. Verse 8, please. Verse 9, for I am the least of uh, the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. Verse 10. I like what Apostle Paul said, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Verse 11, let us read together. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so be believed. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much for this wonderful morning that you have given to us. I pray that you will empower us. Lord, help us to understand more, that we might be challenged more and to serve more. Thank you for Brother Ray. Pastor Ray and his members for their faithfulness. And thank you also, Lord, for showing them your grace and mercy, allowing them to uh, build this beautiful building. And uh, also, Lord, many souls get saved time to time in their ministry. Thank you also, Lord, for their faithfulness in promoting missions, world missions. Thank you also for supporting us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Pwede na tayo makaupo. This passage talks about the resurrections of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, Paul said, even me myself, I have seen him. The last one that have seen, seen him. And so he was so encouraged. He wanted to tell the church at Corinth about his position being an apostle. But... If we can uh, see here is that he considered himself as just an ordinary one. Look at in verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles that I am not meant to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church. You know what? I can see Apostle Paul was so humble. No? Pinapaliit niya yung sarili niya. And uh, he doesn't think that he is uh, above or somebody else in comparison to other apostles. But you know, the reason with that is it, it's only by the grace of God. Amen? Amen? You know why we are here this morning? Because of the grace of God. We have nothing to be proud with ourselves. But the good thing, he said, I labor more. I work hard. You know, God bestows his blessing to us. It's one of us. But at the same time, if we are not going to use it properly, then we cannot grow, we cannot enlarge, we cannot expand, we cannot be as successful the way we think in life. This morning, I would like to talk about the least become the greatest. On sa man ang uh, pasabot sa least. Least means little. Kajot, gamay, no? Gamay. Piti. In French, piti. No? And uh, small or low, or it seems nobody. It's not important. Did you know that everything starts from little thing? Normally, if not all. And so this morning, I would like to encourage you, don't think that you cannot do anything for God. May na mga tao na, you know, I'm, I'm nobody. I'm not talented. I don't have, you know, this and this and this and this, like others. But you know what? If you allow God to bestow His grace in your life, and you will work hard, then God will make you somebody in this world. 
When we went to Haiti way back 1992, our purpose only is just to win souls. Not thinking about great things. And God oriented us to do his ministry. We started visit, uh, visiting houses, Bible study, soul winning. And God allowed us for our first Sunday over uh, 100 people. And two got saved on that. And we are so happy. <laughs> we thought only just 10 people will show up. And uh, you know, little by little, God enlarges our visions. If you can see right now, from wall to wall we have buildings, although, although we don't have big, uh, big uh, area like you. And uh, we have a nice church building, Pastor Ray, I've, uh, I've seen that. And we have a uh, four stories uh, school building. We have uh, orphanage and uh, guest house and our house. We are amazed how God moves. But the only thing I can tell you is that every time God poured his grace in our lives, we use it. We use it. Paul became great because of the grace of God and hard work. Hard work. You can ask anybody that you can consider being a successful person in this world. Aside from their capital, aside from the grace of God, they all working hard. When we arrived in Haiti, I decided to work not less than 12 hours a day. I don't tell my wife this, but I have a commitment with God to work more than three years, non-stop. Walang tigil yan. Monday to Monday, or if you start Sunday, Sunday to Sunday. Seven days a week. 30 days a month. 365 days a year for more than three years. And I said, Lord, please help us. I will do my part and we believe that you will uh, going, you will going to do your part also at the same time. And little by little we have seen the grace and the blessing of God in the ministry. Now this morning because of our time, I would like to give you three things about the least become the greatest. Number one, Ambitions. Ambitions. Ambition is a strong desire to do something in life. Pag mayroon kang ambition, yan ang motivation mo. You don't look about your situations, whether you are poor, or it seems nobody. Your ambition is the one that driving you in order to reach your destiny. Ambitions. Ambition will pave the way to success. Don't be bothered of your past experience in life. Kung minsan yan ang nag-trigger sa atin eh. Parang may sinasabi sa ating utak ba? Eh, hindi ka magiging successful kasi ganito ka, ganito ka, bobo ka, mahina ka. Wala kang pira, wala kang personality, something like that. You came from a poor family, you're nothing. Don't allow your past experience dominate you. It doesn't matter if you are drunkard, smoker, gambler, gamer, or whatever. Think about God can, you know, lift up you and use you for his honor and glory. Ambitions. You remember the story about uh, David in 1 Samuel chapter 17? Anong sabi ng kanyang mga brothers? Ay, huwag ka dyan. Bata ka pa, hindi mo kaya. Hindi ka namin kaya eh. Bible says in verse 29, sabi ni David, wala bang karapatan ako na makiging uh, tawag dito to fight against Goliath. 
You know, David was motivated for three things. If you look your Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 25, there were three things that being promised by the king. Number one, riches. Oh, pag mahirap ka, pag nakarinig ka, wow, you, be, you are going to be rich. It will stir up you, encourage you, boost your morale. Secondly, anong sabi niya dyan? Wife. Wealth and wife. Tingnan mo yan, ha? It's a matter of killing the giant. You can have riches, wealth, and wife. And then your family will be given freedom, freely, in the kingdom. Can you imagine that? So in short, David fight Goliath and we understand. In verse uh, 49, he killed Goliath. He was considered a little one. Nobody. Bakit nandyan ka? Alam mo, marami sa ating ganun mga kapatid eh. You know, mahirap sa mga medyo nakaangat na magsuko ng kanilang buhay sa ministry. I used to work in Iloilo. We have over 400 students every year. As I look around, karamihan ng mga estudyante galing sa mga mahirap na pamilya. Yung mga hindi mapadala sa Bible school, uh, sa, sa university, kasi walang pira. Oh, doon kayo sa Bible school! Hmm. Thank God! Because of that, hundreds and even thousands of churches have been started because of those ordinary people. You know, in Haiti, marami sa kanilang hindi nakapag-aral. Marami sa aming mga Bible school students, we teach them so that they can know how to read and write. Pero ngayon, mga pastors na. In the capital city only, we started 30 mission work with uh, populations of over 2 million people. There are still room to start new work. Well, of course, we are not despising or being critical of those who are, you know, in a position or people who are being a little elevated in the society. We need them. God loves them and cares for them. God can use them greatly. Can you imagine in the life of David? A shepherd, ordinary boy, become the son of the king, become rich, famous, and he has a beautiful wife, like my wife. Amen? <laughs> Ambitions! I remember one of our students, his name is Osias de Fami. He came to Bible school, ang iyang dalag isang stick na tubo, tubo. Ha? Ganito. Mm. At saka tatlong abokado. When I asked him, sabi ko, wala ka namang bag. Itong, itong maliit niya na bag, nandiyan yung abokado niya, at saka probably dalawa o tatlong damit. Sabi ko, are you serious about coming to, to Bible school to study? Sabi niya, yes, pastor. I found out na may asawa pala. Dalawang anak. Dalawang anak. And so, sabi ko, Brad, you know, we're looking for a student, but may asawa ka. Sino mapapakain sa asawa mo? Ay sabi niya, we talk already, we discussed that, and both of us agreed that I'm going to go to Bible school. In short, sabi niya sa akin, kasi sa ayaw ko eh. Ako pang ayaw. No, sana <laughs> we'll pull him, no? Hihilain natin na sasama sa atin, no? But anyway, sabi niya, Pastor, if you can prove me for three months, tatlong buwan lang, I promise you I will stay no matter what. Pag December, yan lang kung pwede ako makauwi, uuwi ako. At saka summer, 
Yan lang. Maliban yan, I will stay here. Dearly beloved, this morning I will tell you, ito si Brad Oshias. He stayed more than three months. In fact, he finished his three years Bible training. May asawa pa yan, ha? You know, as of now, his church is reaching over 600 every Sunday. And he started another six mission work. What a blessing. A man with ambitions. Second one is about in verse 10. Look at your Bible in verse 10. But secondly, is first ambition, second accelerations. Acceleration means increasing our speed through hard work. Kailangan natin yan. People are dying around the world. We cannot stop working, praying, and helping as much as we can. Alam niyo yung, yung series? May speed limit yan eh. Up to 80 yata. Pagdating sa 80, ang, mayroong mechanism dyan. Ay, awan ko kung ano yan. Computerized yata. Gaganon-ganon. So, nag-slow down yung driver sa pag-accelerate, okay na. na? Mm. Paglampas dyan sa 80, may bracket, may level. But you know, in the ministry, we don't have. Amen? As much as we can, we should go on. Accelerate yourself. Don't be satisfied. Don't be contented. We can do more. I, I want ko lang, <laughs> after all na Pastor Ray and you members built this beautiful building, I don't think that you are still satisfied with this. I don't think so. I believe the dream here is about keep on building and reaching people around this area and even around the world. That's why you engage so much yourselves in missions. There are two things that motivate us to accelerate more. Number one, appetency. The word appetency is another word uh, synonym about appetite. Yung appetite, yung may gusto-gusto kang magkain, di ba? No? Busog ka na, para nagabusong ka na, pero gusto mo pang magkain. Gusto mo pang uminom. Yan din ang ibig sabihin dyan. But in this case, it's about a desire to do something more. Appetency. Parang wala kang satisfaction. You and souls, dalawang tao, tatlong tao, apat na tao, sampo, or you, you, you give and give and give and give and give more. Something like that. There's a desire that drives you to do more in life. Sabi ko dati, pag nakasimula kami ng isang gawain sa Haiti, tama na. Pero nakita namin na God bless His ministry, it give us more strength, power, desire, ambitions to do more. So ngayon, sa Dominican Republic, ang apat natin missionaryo, they started their own Bible school. Amen? Mayroon silang kinsi na estudyante na pulo sa first year, asa ah, second year, lima sa uh, second year. Maganda? So ang aming objective dyan, kasi sa Dominican, they're speaking Spanish, and most of our pastors are speaking English and Spanish, so that we can reach out the Spanish-speaking people, not only in Dominican Republic, but other countries in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, they speak four languages, mainly English, uh, French Creole, and uh, Dutch as well as uh, Spanish, no? Creole, Dutch, English, and Spanish. Our Bible school in Port-au-Prince, we have 14 students right now because of the problem. I told them, or told our staff, that they are going to learn English, Spanish, music, sign language. Apat. Because we are going to use this as a way to reach out others. 
Another word is about aggressiveness. Aggressiveness. Di ba may mga taong uh, slow, pero mayroon mga tao na very aggressive. In other words, forceful. Talagang yung, yung hindi niya kaya, pero ginagawa niya talaga. Kinakaya niya talaga. Mahirap, pero uh, sinusubukan niya. Yan sa ministry. Subalit mahirap, nandiyan tayo. We think some way and ways how we can penetrate and do something in the ministry. Aggressiveness. Keep serving God and let God bless you. Ayan ang sabi niya dito in verse 10 eh. But by the grace of God I am what I am and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. Why? But I labored more abundantly than the old. Nandiyan sa huli si Apostle Paul kasi he used to be a persecutor. Pero kung tingnan natin, he became great, no? More than the others. Because he worked hard by the grace of God. Mayroon kaming pastor ngayon, si Pastor Giordani. Very aggressive guy in the ministry. Few years ago, God allowed us to help him buying land. And four years ago, we helped him build a nice church. 60 by 30 feet. Ngayon, puno-puno na. Because of his aggressiveness, not just only in soul winning, preaching, and uh, started a school there, helping others. Mayroong organisasyon na nakita sa kanya, Pastor. Sa palagay ko, sa isip nila, potential ito ah. We can, we can use him, we can help him. Anong ginawa? Pinatayuan siya ng building. 11 big classrooms. According to his report to us, it cost about 240,000 US dollars just to build that school. Big school with content. With the content, you know, content? Kung saan pwede mapakain yung mga bata. Kasi nakita nila, agresibo siya eh. Undi go! Always doing something for others. Maganda. Yung lupa niya maliit, Pinalaki. Binilan siya ng additional land. Now he's doing well. He's doing well. First, ambitions. Second, aggressiveness. And the last one is about adaptations. Adapting something that will help us in life. If you can adopt the strategy of Pastor Ray here, by the grace of God, you can do more in life. Alam mo kung saan-saan ako pumupunta, tumitingin-tingin ako kung anong pwede ko ma-adapt. Baka sakali. Maybe we're not going to be like them, but we can learn and improve what we have in life. Adaptation is an act of changing something to a better one. You know what happened with Apostle Paul or Saul? Saul to be what? Persecutor, being a persecutor. But God changed him from being a sinner to become a saint. From being a persecutor to become a preacher. From being a murderer to become a minister. From being a cruel man to become a com compassionate one. From being nobody to become somebody. Amen? Yes! Because of the grace of God. God can use you. When I was in Bible school, they kicked me out. Because they think I'm nothing. I don't dream to become a missionary. I don't have much talent like many. But one thing I know, there is God can use everybody. Adapt means copy. 
copy their teaching, their training, and other things that will help you to boost yourself and to accomplish more in this life. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, Be followers of me as I follow the Lord. The source of strength, the source of grace, the source of everything that will help us in life is the Lord Jesus Christ. One of our pastor right now, his name is August. He worked with us for three years as a staff, and then he decided to move away and start a new work. Since then, he started four churches. And he has a desire to do more. He started his own Bible school. Walang support ayan. Alam mo, even sa aming Bible school, our Bible students eat only once a day. Mabuti na yan, rice and beans, kung mayroon. In fairness, I'm not trying to be critical with our situations, but that is true. The majority of the Haitian, if they can eat once a day, rice and beans, magandang buhay yan. Talagang mahirap ang kalagayan. But you know, one thing I would like to tell you, their soul is the same price with your soul. Walang kaibahan yan. As of now, Pastor August, he has 25 students. 15 in second year, and I think 10 in first year. Next year is going to graduate. If, you know, probably all of them. And those guys will start new work in the country of Haiti. Mga kapatid, adapt something that will inspire you. Think about this work here. Just imagine, kung mayroon tayong third, uh, ganitong gawain 30 years, uh, 13 years ago, wala. It's just something like this. Because somebody, when he received the grace of God, he thinks that he can use it and build it. And keep on building and building and building and building. And because of that, you are here this morning. Like missions. 30 years ago, wala tayong over 100 churches in Haiti. But because of the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Paul, he was one of the least one. But he said, by the grace of God, and I labor more. God bless his work. If you are not saved this morning, God loves you. He wants you to be saved. Why not to think about this? Death is sure. And it's coming too fast. Think about your life. That God loves you. And he wants you to be saved this morning. I would like to request everybody to please bow your hands and close your eyes. As we extend our invitation this morning with Pastor Ray. Thank you, Pastor Lini. I ask everybody to please stand up and we will uh, give the invitation. Uh, first of all, kung doon na tayo mga bisita karon, I don't know kung doon na ba tayo bisita, but I will want to give this, the invitation first sa atong mga bisita. While the piano will play so play. Maybe amo ka bisita karon. Wala ka makasiguro kung mamatay ka ang imong kalag pa doon sa langit. May ka pastor, I don't know where I'm going. Kung kuhaon sa gino, akong hinulaman nga kinabuhi. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believe it on Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Ang Diyos na higugma ni mo, iyang gihatag, iyang bugtong anak, ang imong tuhuan o dawaton si Jesus Christ karon, tagaan ka niya sa kinabuhing dayon. <coughs> o mahimong makasiguro ka 
sa kaluwasan sa imong kalag. Mi mi ka pastor, I want to be saved. Dawata si Jesus Christ karon nga imong maluluwas. Ang imong buhaton ipataas lang imong tuo nga kamot ay mailan nga imong siyang dawaton. Ado na ba? I don't know kung doon na ba tayo bisita but I don't want to close the invitation without giving you a chance to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Ado na ba? Pastor, I want to be saved. Raise your right hand. I presume that all of us are saved. Now Christian, the message is very clear, easy to understand. Christian, what is your ambition? sa imong pagkakristuhanon. Young people, kung sa may nasa, imong kasing-kasing. <clears throat> Maybe may yung kapasar, I want to be used by God, that's my ambition. Can you come forward and nail down to the altar? Christian, we need to accelerate our mission giving for the sake of of souls. If you are a Christian businessman, God wants you to accelerate because our time is very short. In Europe, we are facing war in Europe. Ang mga tao karoon, nagkagubot na sila. And you know, that's the sign of the Lord Jesus Christ coming is very near the pandemic we are here in the last days we need to accelerate we need to do something for God will you come and say Lord use me help me O Father our Heavenly Father we thank you Lord for these people of God they came forward I don't know Lord what is in, the, in their hearts But Lord, thank you so much for the message. Thank you, Missionary Lini, for his heart, his love for souls. Lord, I pray that you will continue to protect them and also his family, Lord. Going back to Haiti in the Dominican Republic, I know, Lord, their work is hard. Dili pariyan na mo, dili gino. Wala kami nagatubang sa grabe ng kakuyaw sa among kinabuhi. But Lord, sila doon ay kalisod sa ilang pag-alagad ni mo. But Lord, thank you for their joy to serve you. Lord, I pray that the people, Lord, they, that came forward, they knelt down, bless their hearts to God. Lord, thank you so much to God for your grace is so present for us. Lord, I pray you continue to bless us and bless these people, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Dagan salamat.